इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन माइग्रेशन डायस्पोरा एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑर्गेनाइज बाय ग्लोबल रिसर्च फोरम ऑन डायस्पोरा एंड ट्रांसनेशनलिज्म सिंस वी हैव नॉट हैड एनी रिमार्क्स फ्रॉम दिस पैनल अबाउट द गल्फ डोंट माइंड आई विल टेक द लिबर्टी ऑफ सेइंग मेकिंग अ फ्यू रिमार्क्स ऑन रिगार्ड टू दिस सब्जेक्ट the positive side is that we are the preferred community across the gulf as i said we are 8 million strong we reached this figure over the last 35 years initially we were a num- poor three or four we had yemen in 1982 when indira ji came to saudi arabia we had uh, yemenis were number 1 egyptians were number 2 pakistanis were number 3 and indians were a poor four yemeni were 1 million or 3 million Egyptians were one million, Pakistanis were half million, and Indians were quarter million. And then it all changed dramatically. By the time you come to the end of the decade, you find the Yemenis have been thrown out, the Egyptians are frozen, the Pakistanis are frozen, and the Indians who galloped ahead. And by 1990, we are 750,000. They all have remained the same. And then the picture changes within 10 years. In the year 2000. We are 3.6 million, and the Pakistanis are way, way beyond the low. In year 2010, we are 6 million, and now in 2015 we are 8 million. What a remarkable shift we have seen! Number two, the remittances have kept pace with these numbers, so we are now getting about 35 billion dollars. This was not highlighted earlier because many of these banking arrangements are through the U.S. But now there is a focus on this, and indeed some reports have appeared that perhaps our Gulf remittances would be as much as 50 billion as well. Then there is a change in the profile of our community. In 1990, our community was more than 90 percent blue collar, balanced 10 percent for white collar non-professionals, and professionals were almost negligible. There has also been, I must share with you some figures regarding from where these people come from. Overwhelmingly, 50% of our community is from one state, Kerala. So, if I'm looking at 8 million people, I'm looking at 4 million Kerala people from Kerala. Others are so total of this diaspora is from the four states of South India. So, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, and Karnataka provide 80% of our community, which is a blue collar community. They provide the blue collar community. The balance comes from all over the country. Now, what are the challenges that we have faced? There has been, I have noticed, a steady improvement in the increasing sensitivity of local governments with regard to the treatment of the labour, particularly of our labour. And there is, as I said, increasing sensitivity. So, new institutions have emerged which focus increasingly. on welfare earlier they used to be very reluctant to engage with other governments the sending governments on the subjects of migration and the welfare of the community that has changed and slowly but surely the government of india has entered into bilateral agreements on community welfare with all the countries of the gcc today that is the challenges we face and i must say to you with deep respect most of the challenges that are that we face originate in india a very very powerful nexus of recruiting agent bureaucrat and politician has been set up it has been in place from 1970s and it's very very powerful today as a result you have two consequences number one large numbers of our people pay large sums of our, of money to the recruiting agent before they are able to get out of the country before when they have paid this huge sum of money they are today in thrall to the persons from whom they borrowed the money to pay when i started my career in kuwait all those years ago in 76 the going rate was 7000 rupees by the time i came to baghdad a few years later it had become 25000 rupees a few years ago in 2011 i was told it is 1 lakh rupees but it can even be 2 lakh rupees it varies between 1 and 2 lakh year 2000 doctors even had started paying uh, months sums of money between 3 to 5 lakh rupees to come abroad 
for the labor it is much more painful because till he has paid this money back he cannot show his face at home. His family have put together with great difficulty the money by selling the land or worse than that by taking huge loans. As a result there is an extraordinary tension. A tension in the heart of each individual who is now under pressure not just to pay back the loan his family put together for him but there is also a very high expectation in terms of how he will reward them for their effort. And a large number of people are terrified about going home for a vacation. Because uh, my own driver tells me that every time he goes on vacation, he has to spend 5,000 dirham, which takes you to about 75,000 or 80,000 rupees, because he has to take gifts for each and every person. Then we have the issue, due to this nexus, the issue of the illegal migrant. The illegal migration is that you come with, either you come legally, and then you become illegal because you uh, have overstayed your contract. Your entire stay is based on the contract. Or right from the beginning you were illegal in the sense that you came on a family visa or you came as a, uh, as, uh, 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 as uh, a family member, you know, depend, or, or, or as a tourist and just stayed on. So you are illegal. This illegal migration is the worst aspect. And repeatedly it was my business to tell people, please, whatever happens in your life, never, never, never become an illegal. But then there are people who are helpless and they will tell you that, look, I can't go back because the people from whom I have taken loans will not let me live. Therefore, I would rather live here illegally than show my face at home. So this is with regard to it. The other issue we have very often is with regard to trafficking, particularly of women. Now, as you can imagine, government of India is extreme, has been extremely sensitive with regard to the migration of women. Uh, and we are, I would say, far better off compared to many others. Because the number of women workers who have gone from India to the Gulf is very, very small compared to, say, Indonesia. Take, for example, Saudi Arabia. There are about one million Indonesian female workers more than half a million, about 600,000 Filipino workers, female workers, and only 50,000 Indian female workers. Long ago when I was Consul General in Jeddah, looking at the state of the community where I was located and the level of development, I had put the minimum age for, mig for migration, for the employment of women in Saudi Arabia at 40 years. And I am happy to report to you that it is still in place. In the other cases where we regulated the, the employment of female workers, particularly as maid servant, we have put the minimum age of 30 years and we have put some conditions. All the problems that embassies face in the Gulf with regard to women are those who came in illegally. And you are astonished as to how a woman can come illegally when you have so many procedures in place because of corruption. There is, as I said, this nexus. I learned in my posting, there is something known in Kerala and Andhra Pradesh, pushing visa. A pushing, pushing visa is that this minor girl, completely illiterate and incapable of articulating even her name properly, is pushed through the immigration counter, physically pushed, so that she crosses the border, I mean crosses the barrier, goes and sits in our flight. That has become a little more difficult now because the cameras have been put in place. But you know that all technology will crack against the rock of corruption. So you cannot be entirely sure that you have a foolproof system. I have seen the abuse these women are subjected to by the people who are at the other end. And many of them may not have come as prostitutes, but many of them may be reduced to that. They take shelter with the embassy at a very late stage in their life. And I have found not even a minimum interest with regard to how they reach there. As you know, prostitution and trafficking is a two-way street in the sense that you send a woman here, very largely you will find local authorities are participating in that. So when you have set up a, a, a brothel in a certain locality, almost certainly the police personnel would know about it. We had a case, dreadful case of a lady who my colleague who came to us in the embassy in Abu Dhabi for shelter. And she gave the names of all the people at full day. She was still lucid. She could give the names of all the people in India and the people here and their address, etc. And my colleague was absolutely thrilled. And he said, 
now we are very lucky we can break this gang and he went to the local police and gave all the information I, he told me later and I said you have made the biggest mistake of your life because the police this is happening with the because of the police and they arrested the girl and sentenced her for three months for illegal sex and that is what happened and then she was deported no action was taken against anybody is this changing we have a very robust as I said engagement with government but if the problems are, are at home people like you should study these problems I have found that there is a reluctance in Kerala to study some of the consequence of migration. I have seen this. I could be wrong. I have been to Center for Developing Studies many times. I have been consistently disappointed with the quality of the research and the depth they should go to. Many things that should come out in the open domain, in the public domain are hidden away. The consequence, the high suicide rate, high level of alcoholism, all of these are linked with diaspora related matters.